Ko Sophie Hoskins toku ingoa. Uh, I'm the Eons Kaiarahi, and we're super fortunate to um, have Freya Bullock here with us today from Aurere College, who's going to share with us a little bit about her outdoor education uh, program that she has going on there. So I will pass it over to Freya to introduce herself to you, and we will crack into it. Kia ora. Kia ora Freya. Uh, kia ora Sophie. Kia ora koutou, ko Freya toku ingoa. Um, I am a kayako at Aurere College in South Auckland um, and yeah I'm just like super excited to have this opportunity to share about I guess all of the um, mātauranga Māori that we've been fortunate to bring into our curriculum at Aurere College um, and yeah definitely like all the support we've received um, from the mātauranga PLD as well in helping us to shape that curriculum. Awesome. Thank you, Freya. Yeah, and um, you've come along to a couple of the EONS, Mātauranga Māori and Outdoor Education, um, uh, PLD, Noho Marae. Is that right? Yeah, so I came yeah. to the very first one in Tauranga and then I went to the one um, in Dargaville as well. Um, awesome. Both very different, but yeah, you just, you get so much out of it. It's so cool. Yeah, oh, that's really good to hear. Um. Well, yeah, we've got you here today to share with us a little about how you are incorporating Te Ao Māori into your outdoor education program and um, maybe some of the changes you may have made or the changes in your thinking around outdoor education. So um, I will just pass it over to you to share with us a little bit about what you're doing and how you're doing it and why you're doing it. Kia ora. Um, yeah, so it's kind of hard to like put a starting point on it on when I actually started incorporate it, c incorporating it into our curriculum. Um, yeah, it's just it's it's always been a passion kind of um, that's built since being at Aurere College. Um, just bit by bit, started learning a lot more about Te Ao Māori and how beneficial it is to our tōira, to our students. Um, and yeah, just kind of started building that passion little by little. Um, I definitely started incorporating more after going to the PLD in Tauranga. It just, um, not only the content ideas that I got from that PLD, but just the, really the most important thing is the wairua of it and um, the passion that it instilled in me to continue running with that idea um, and continue seeking ways to incorporate mā tauranga Māori into my teaching. Um, I think probably before going to that PLD, I was a bit overwhelmed and I was just kind of like felt underqualified to incorporate it into my teaching, um, being Pākehā, but also part Māori, but still on a discovery journey of my own and trying to um, learn more about my whakapapa. Um, yeah, I definitely felt underqualified in, in trying to bring it in. But yeah, since going to that PLD, um, it kind of just highlighted to me that, like, you know, we can never know everything. Um, and especially in Tao Māori, uh, the perspective is so broad that um, there's no one that knows everything. And so, yeah, I think it was just encouraging just getting some little steps and a um, bit of passion as well um, to drive me forward in the ideas that I had. Um, but, yeah. Um, just a few of the things that um, I've been bringing into our curriculum, um, not only so I take uh, level two outdoor education at our school, um, but also um, I'm assistant HOD in our department. So I'm in charge of um, creating junior health and PE curriculum. So it's been really cool to have that opportunity to um, to yeah, really shape it with Te Ao Māori concepts. Um, I think the biggest difference that I've seen um, between the way that the education system is currently and has been previously is that obviously being under a Western education system is very linear. And so a lot of the concepts we learn are quite superficial and they're very um, informational, whereas Te Ao Māori is very broad, it's very holistic. Um, like if you take Hawara, for example, um, you're not just looking at something superficially, but there's just so much depth to these ideas. Um, but yeah, I think, um, where do I start? I think yeah, the, more. probably the first kind of concept that I became really passionate about bringing into our teaching um, was the marumataka. Um, and so the marumataka is the Māori lunar calendar, but um, it's not only a lunar calendar, but there's just, 
Um, the more I started looking into it, the more I saw relation with how we can use the marumataka to not only connect with the environment, but also understand our own holder. Um, and so I started reading into the marumataka and actually um, making my own reflections in my own life. So um, I had a journal and I'd write down like each phase of the marumataka. So um, just just for people um, who may not be aware of the marumataka, um, so it's a 30 day cycle or um, yeah, 30 phases of the marumataka. Um, so each phase of the moon has um, different energy, different um, activities that are good for that phase. Um, and all of this has been, all of this mātauranga has been put together by um, Māori in the past. So it's, it's an indigenous concept. Um, but yeah, the belief is um, just as the moon controls the tides, um, and the moon has gravita gravitational pull over the tides. So it also has gravitational pull over our own energy and our own, um, yeah, our own energy, our own emotions, um, because we are made up of 70% water, right? So the moon also has um, pull over how we behave as well. Um, so the more I started looking into this and reflecting on my own life, the more I started to see correlation between um, say, for example, one phase of the Maramataka is Tangaroa, um, and within that phase, Tangaroa, the atua of um, the moana, the ocean, um, that phase is good for ocean activities, and it's a high energy phase. And so during that phase, I would recognize that, yeah, like when you're by the ocean, it's going to really lift your wairua and really um, inspire you and, and allow you to live your best when you're there. Um, versus some of the more difficult marumataka phases like tamatea phase, the atua of tamatea phase is tafrimatia. And um, the common behaviors in line with that phase are uncertainty, unpredictability. Um, tafrimatia is the atua of the wind. And so um, just as the wind blows in different ways, so our emotions are pulled in different ways. And so I started recognizing my own emotions during that phase were very up and down. And I had to be really careful about how I spoke to people during that phase because I was much easily, much more easily triggered during that phase. Um, so starting off with reflecting for myself, but then actually starting to reflect on how other people were, say, for example, at school. Um, so noticing the um, behavior of students during Tomate phase is quite often pretty much always very unsettled at school. And so it's really hard for them to focus when they have that kind of unsettled um, behavior. Yeah, And so, yeah, I just, I guess the first thing that I really saw potential in was trying to create a curriculum that aligned with the marumataka. Um, and so what that could look like in health and PE or outdoor ed is aligning the activities that you do um, with, what phase of the marumataka it is and so um, for example if we're taking our, our kids out to the moana we want to try and align it with tangaroa phase because we know that during that phase they're going to get the most out of that outdoor experience and they will fully connect not only on a superficial level but on a deeper spiritual and cultural level with the atua tangaroa um, and then yeah during like during tamatea phases not probably not taking them into the outdoors or just even being more aware of being in the outdoors and what could go wrong during that phase because you know that anything could come out of anywhere mm. um yeah so I just awesome. um I I started trying to bring that in last year um probably the most difficult thing was trying to get other people passionate about it other kayak or um even the students like it was quite challenging to get other people to buy into this idea um, but yeah, I think the the biggest thing for any of these te ao Māori, um concepts that we incorporate is that you have to be passionate about it yourself in order to um, implement it in a genuine and authentic way. And so um, yeah, if you're if that's an idea that you want to run with, making sure that when you're teaching other kayak or these ideas that you're not just telling them um, or mm. showing them, but maybe taking them out into to tie out into the environment and helping them to actually feel it and experience themselves first. Um, yeah, I think there's a quote and it says something like, um, like people will forget 
what you told them and what you showed them, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. And it's kind of the same with, um, with our learning, right? Like kids are going to forget what we told them or showed them, but they'll always remember how you made them feel. And they'll always remember these experiences we created for them, how they felt during these experiences. So yeah, um, I think I could probably go on for awesome. for hours about the Matamataka. So I'll leave that there. That's um, cool. That's, that's kind of like my main, yeah, my main um thing that I've been working on bringing into our junior curriculum, but also into our outdoor ed curriculum. Um, yeah. Wow. My junior is that with your junior um physical education and health education? Yeah. 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 So awesome. just across wow. the board. P and health um obviously another barrier to that is that um we are like we operate by a western education system and so it is like timetabled slots so some slots you do have a classroom and some slots you only have the gym or whatever um but yeah just trying to make it as flexible as possible in line with the maramataka and and the matauranga that that teaches us um yeah, actually, I might just share this doc quickly. Yep, go for it. Um, it kind of just has some ideas of how you could align the maramataka um, with kopapa that you teach within your curriculum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, all right, let's see, it's not this one. How do we go next tab? Well, we could see it. Yep, we could see it. Just click on your Maramataka activities. We had it there. Um, yep, there it is. This one. Okay. Oh, so, this one. Awesome. Yeah. So I created um this doc just on based on my own observations. So the Maramataka is very much based on observations of how you see the environment moving and what that teaches us about our own movement as well. Um mm -hmm. so yeah. The phase here, so fetal is your new moon, um, mm -hmm. and that's a low energy phase. Um, if you think about it, like the moon disappears, and so obviously it's kind of creating darkness in what we see in life as well. Um, and so it's a time of rest because it's hard to see or um, or put things into pra practice because um, there's no moon to guide what you do, and so. Um, this phase, yeah, is, is more for reflection or goal setting um, where you just start again. You start afresh at the beginning of the new lunar phase. Um, I'll skip through. So here's the Tamatea phases that I was talking about. Um, and yep. so I've just written in here under the kaupapa is um, Atua is Tafumatia. Um, what to expect is unpredictable weather, but that also equals unpredictable wairua and unpredictable behaviour. Um, yeah. This teaches us to be cautious or careful um, using observation and patience, um, not only in te tile, but also within a school environment as well. Um, it's a time awesome. that we really need to reinforce positive relationships because kids can get really impatient, even teachers can get really impatient with each other. Um, and so just being more conscious of actually um, being patient and, and positive with people. Um, activities that are appropriate for this phase, uh, if you think about the atua, so tafri matia, um, you, you can use the knowledge that we know from tafri matia, which is the wind, in order to determine our activities. So it could be using your breath, which um, is a symbol of the wind, so mm -hmm. calming activities such as mindfulness and meditation or even just, um, you know, like there's opportunity just to take kids out into te taio and to just reflect and be grateful and to, to understand the breath of life and to, to value the place that we are currently in life. Um, yeah. And then the other aspect to that is if you're, so you can either use the breath of life as a calming activity or you can use it for physical exertion. So I guess using up the breath so that there's no breath to use on, I guess, negative behaviors. Um, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'll, I'll skip through. Um, we'll skip through. So Te Rako Nui is the full moon. Um, yeah. And Rangi Nui is the atua of um, Te Rako Nui. Te Rako Nui being the full moon, meaning full energy as well. 
Um, so it is an abundant time for pretty much any physical activity, any um, outdoor activity. Um, so yeah, this this would be a great time to plan outdoor activities on Te Rako Nui, but also just understanding the behaviour of kids as well, that on Te Rako Nui, they're not going to want to sit in a classroom and, um, and read and write or do... I guess, lower activities because they have an abundance of um, energy in line with the full moon. Yeah. Um, kore kore. So kore means the nothingness, um, <laughs> which is um, associated with the atua eo. So who, that is the supreme atua. Um, and so I guess what I've learned through this phase is that kore meaning nothing. It's really hard to um, find motivation. It's You kind of just feel like a bit purposeless during that phase. So really important just to um, to trust in the atua eo and just trust that this phase will pass. Um, but yeah, probably not a great phase for doing like high energy activities, but um, yeah, just a, a phase for trusting and, and maybe improving whole water in small ways. Um, Tangaroa is another great phase for outdoor activities. Obviously, if you're doing any activities with the ocean, um, especially because um, that will be in a, a really abundant time. I think last year um, with my level two outdoor education class, I did Waka Ama for 2.4 um, performance standard. Um, yep. And we, I think I did it without even realizing, like I didn't plan it accordingly. It was just a free day, but it did align with Tangaroa. Um, oh, cool. and, and it was just like one of the best days. Like it was such a simple day. Um, it wasn't anything special with the activity or the place that we went, but it was just, it was so abundant because the kids just really felt the wairua of being on the ocean. And um, yeah, you just, you see so much change um, and passion within them. Um, just from being out in Te Taio. Um, yeah, I think I'll leave it there. So this awesome. is just, yeah, a little reflection doc that I put together um, of my own reflections and then the cope up of how that I could, how I could implement that within um, my curriculums at school as well. Um, but yeah, like I think Maramataka is really um, specific to not only the environment that you are in, um, but also your own reflections as well. So obviously we all have our own observations, our own reflections on Te Taio that we can we can align with each of these phases. And yeah, if you're lucky enough to be in an environment that is really connected with the natural environment, um, then your observations of the Maramataka will be different to say mine, which is in a very urban environment. So yeah. Awesome. And it's really cool how you're bringing that to the forefront for your apunga. And uh, I think the more you do it, you know, year after year, the more that they will um, see that that is just part of your kaupapa with that class. With yeah, yeah. Classes. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Wow. Super cool. Um, is, there, is there anything else you wanted to share or um, feel like would be good to share around um how you've gone about doing things or any other changes you've made or um, how your view on outdoor education may have changed or anything? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I guess I just, other than the Marumataka stuff, like in terms of um, specifically for outdoor education standards, what I started doing is um, after that uh, PRD in Tauranga, what I did is I went through all of the standards that we currently teach in level two outdoor education. And I just made, I think I, I made notes of the concepts that related to me the most within Te Ao Māori. So one of them being pepeha. Um, I thought that was a really important concept to bring in because obviously it's um, it's helping our students to connect with their identity culturally, um, but also know their whakapapa as well. Um, and so I kind of just related concepts like pepeha or other te ao Māori concepts to the standards that we had. Um, and so, for example, in term one, I, I thought, obviously, that's a great time to do pepeha because it's, it's the intro term. Um, and we pretty much always do 2.7 risk management in term one. Um, and so just the way that I related PPR to risk management was um, with the trips that we did 
I tried to um, align it with PPH, so um, using PPH as a formula for the trips that we went on. And I think that was an idea that was actually suggested at that um, at that PLD in Tauranga is using PPH as a formula for your trips. Um, and so, yeah, I took I take the kids to um, to a monga, so hike a monga. Um, I take them to the moana. Um, and then I brought in waka ama as well. Obviously, the waka is an important part of um, your PPR. And then just, yeah, it's it's kind of hard, obviously, to go through all of that, but just like really reinforcing that idea and especially as a good starting point for an outdoor education class is finding identity in these significant places um, and how we whakapapa to them. Um, in terms of like how to actually implement the strategies within 2.7 so I totally changed them um and I don't even know like a lot of the a lot of the things that I've changed within the assessment standards I'm like I don't even know if it's okay to do it like this but I just like just found that it was a lot more meaningful for our students because we our all of our students are Māori or Pacifica we don't really have any Pākehā students um and so I just found that these concepts are really relatable for our students um, and so the two risk management strategies that um, I get our students to focus on is firstly um, whakarongo ki te kōrero, um, which means um, like listening to kōrero, um, and the second one, um, te tiro ki te taiao, which is observing te taiao. Awesome. Um, so just looking into te ao Māori, the two ways that Māori learn and the two ways that they um, transferred knowledge in the past was through kōrero, through um, spoken word, but also through observation. And so using those two really key methods of learning from Te Ao Māori and incorporating those into um, as risk management strategies, I found that students have been able to, like, um, I guess, observe the environment more for themselves rather than being told, like, this is what you have to, um, this is what you have to observe or this is what you have to learn from this it's a lot more free for them to observe. And it's not only like, not only for your physical well-being, like observing, oh, there might be like, if you're if you're going on a hike, there might be some cliffs here. So we've got to stay away from the cliffs or this ground is unstable. So I got to walk carefully, not only for your physical well-being, but also just mentally and emotionally, um, really reinforcing that idea of gratitude and appreciation and that um, like our subject is so unique and, we have such an amazing opportunity within our subject to create those those moments of awe and inspiration when students are out in Te Taia. Um, yeah. And so using that also, like when they get to the top of the moanga and they see the view and that moment of awe, um, that, that appreciation and how they observe the environment through appreciation and gratitude actually improves their mental and emotional well-being too. And it gives them motivation to finish the hike. So just going a bit deeper than um, what, how we could physically keep ourselves safe, but also mentally and emotionally, if you used every area of hōra, how are we keeping ourselves safe in every area? So yeah, just broadening your perspective rather than just um, seeing things the way that we always have with a very linear Western perspective. That sounds um, really cool. Yeah. So just, yeah, for me, it's really exciting stuff. And like, I love yeah. this stuff. It's, like yeah I just I feel so passionate about um incorporating things like this um and like another simple example is for like 2.6 leadership um I was reading a, an article from the University of the White of Waikato and um it just had five um key leadership principles from a te ao Māori perspective and that was whanaungatanga, manakitanga, tikanga, kaitiakitanga and whakaiti um, and so using those as leadership strategies, um, and there's so much information, if you look into each one of those leadership strategies, there's so much depth, um, and so much more than what we could get through an English word, so mm -hmm. yeah, te reo Māori words, every word has a symbol, every word has a much deeper meaning that could teach us about life, um, and so I found that created more depth in, in learning as well. Um, and then, yeah, just like 2.8 social responsibility um, instead of this is another one. I was like, I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I just feel like it's going to be more meaningful. Um, yeah. Instead of using, using Hallison's model of social responsibility, 
Um, I created my own uh, model, which I'll just share quickly. Yeah, go for it. Um, I would love to see it. So it is, so this one here, the Mayhana model of social responsibility. Um, so I actually took this from this, so there's a model called the Mayhana model of health, um, and it's mm -hmm. used within hospitals as like a tell Māori approach to improving health. And mm -hmm. so this image here is copyrighted, I'm sorry. Um, I probably wasn't <laughs> allowed to do that. But I just found it was really like, it just was for me, it, it seemed to fit in so well with social responsibility. Yeah. Um, so if we have a look at the waka itself, these are your socially responsible behaviours. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've got, it's similar to the leadership strategies I used as well. So something relatable for the kids that they'd already done. Um, yeah. So tikanga, whakaiti, kaitiakitanga, manakitanga, mana motuhake and rangatiratanga. And so these are the behaviours um, that students have responsibility over. So these are the individual behaviours that they need to demonstrate. Um, mm -hmm. The impact of these individual behaviours impacts on these parts here. I'm not sure what this is called on a waka, the parts that join the two holes. Mm. Yeah. Um, but these are the things that connect us. So ahurea culture, wairua spirit, mm -hmm. and whanaungatanga relationships. And so if you're wow. implementing each of these individual behaviours then you'll strengthen these relationships, you'll strengthen your wairua, you'll strengthen your culture as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then obviously social responsibility, like I find, so I've always taught it over an entire year just to get consistency, um, like kids that are behaving well or like socially responsible in term one and not necessarily also socially responsibility in term four. Like they're not necessarily going to show the same behaviors in term four. And you do see a lot of growth over the year. So I wanted to allow them the opportunity to actually improve um, across an entire year. Um, but yeah, like I think things that you see um, also is that it's quite hard for students to just always be demonstrating these behaviors because there's other things in life that impact us. Even the phase of the marumataka, you might assess them on a day that is actually not a good day for them to be building positive relationships. Um, yeah. And so just, yeah, having a bit of like, taking into account like all the external things that could also impact their behavior. Um, mm -hmm. And so these things here, awesome. I thought were really cool, which is why I wanted to use this model. Um, and yeah. so from the side, you have the winds coming at the waka. And so... Um, if you if you know anything about sailing a waka, the winds obviously they they try to um, change your course of the waka, um, and so these are like your barriers, the things that are going to come at you that um, might actually stop you from demonstrating these behaviours. And so I came up, I got my class to co-construct these. Um, we were doing social responsibility at um, Hillary Outdoors Camp on Great Barrier Island. And so I got them to think about before we went, what are some of the things that are going to stop them from demonstrating mm. these behaviours? Um, and these yeah. are the things that they came up with. So self-doubt, peer pressure, yeah. disorganisation, and fear and anxiety. And yeah. so for them to be aware of these things before going into camp helped them to, um, I guess, be able to not let these things get to them as much so that they could consistently demonstrate these behaviors um, and then on the other hand you've got the currents which propel you forward and so these are the motivation or the things that are going to actually enhance your behavior um, and so they see that the things that would motivate them to demonstrate these behaviors was aspirations um, whanau atua friends and experiences so for them to keep these motivation in mind um, it was gonna it was gonna help them to go further and to help them to have some kind of like depth in demonstrating these behaviors um, a reason to do it rather than just you need to do this for three credits um, mm. yeah kind of creating more consistency in their behavior and their character across all areas of life not just for the subject itself yeah. um, and yeah, down here I just written like what each of each part of this model represents. So the seats or the paddles in the walker represent the socially responsible behaviors that they can demonstrate ind individually. Um, the cross beams which join the double hull, um, those are the values which join us together. Um, 
and they're also affected by our individual behaviours or how we choose to paddle the waka. So obviously for Nongatanga is going to be impacted by the way that you individually behave. Mm -hmm. um, ocean currents represent the enablers, things that can propel us forward. And then the four winds represent um, the challenges or barriers that come at us and try to throw us off course. That's um, so for cool. them to understand this model, it kind of like, it just gave them a, a deeper understanding of social responsibility and why we do it. Like, I think um, within Te Māori, it's so, so important to understand the purpose behind everything because everything is purpose driven. And when you, when you create something around purpose, it's going to be so much more meaningful um, for your students because they'll, they'll see a reason behind it. They're not just like, I don't know why I'm doing this. Like I'm just doing it for the credits or I'm just doing it to get through school. Um, but it's something that they can use for life. Right. Mm. Um, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. super cool Freya. Um, yeah. Thank you so, so much for being so open and willing to share with us um, some really cool ideas there. And I'll try and, um, grab a couple of links such as that leadership uh, paper you read and add them in below this recording uh, so people can have a look at those um, but yeah super inspiring um, what you're doing and how you're doing it so thank you so much for sharing with us thanks so much Sophie no worries uh, ka kite ka kite I will stop that share